Hey guys, welcome back to the Comic Book Core, and we're here again at Comic Tunes and Toys in Tustin. Uh, we're here reviewing our top picks of the week this week. We got three books for you. We got Jonah Hex, Iron Man 27, and Batman 700. It's been a while. Um, we'll start things off with Jonah Hex. I've only read one issue before on Jonah Hex, and I have a vague knowledge of who he is, what his, what his backstory is, and I really didn't need much going into this issue. It had two stories. The first one was him, you know, helping out this old Navajo lady, and he was doing he was doing his good thing, you know, everything. And the second story, which is my favorite story of the two, was him um, going into this past. There were these guys trespassing on this burial ground, and he's like, you know, you best step off, you know. Uh, I reckon you, you you're stepping on my property here, sir. And uh, then it goes into the history of why it's so important to him, and he, you know, his his upbringing amongst the Apaches. And I didn't really know much about it, and if, if you ask me, that was probably the highlight of the issue. Um, his how it, how he was Jonah Hex then, and how it affected him being who he is now, and as he grew up in the he grew up as a slave amongst the Apaches, and then he became he he started to earn their respect and everything. It was really fun watching him, uh, you know, an old Western book, and still you get that hero sense of everything. I really recommend this issue. Two thumbs up. Going to Iron Man now. For me, I got Iron Man 27. Now, if you ask me, this cover, and Briss and I talked about this a little. You'll see, it, you'll see the digital it's format. Salvador Loroco, and he's, he's fabulous. He's amazing. But this cover, you know, there's some artists that uh, they try to do this thing with Iron Man, with Iron Man, with Spider Man's eyes, make it show emotion with the cover. Well, we, we felt that he was trying to do the same. The artist for this was doing that with Iron Man. And. It didn't work at all. We had we just needed to make that comment that it might. While this is a great issue, it was. <laughs> Robots don't need emotion. Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. War Machine's awesome, but Iron Man looks like a scared little cat. Just so like. <laughs> <laughs> so that aside, let's go into but, the um, issue. But yeah, I mean, this is a slow issue, by the way, guys. Um, nothing much pushes the plot in this issue, but it's really character driven, and I really loved how the how the characters are pull out, especially for Tony. We get three different sides of it and it's projected through three different people. We have an old character from Tony's past shows up and this person brings up the question of questioning Tony's objective of this of his current status. Uh, we have Pepper coming in being the young Tony, so it's kinda like the whole father son issue, but it's like father daughter almost where Tony's like, I don't want you to do this because I've already did this, so I'm afraid for you. And then we had Rhodes coming in, which is Tony's doubt. Like, I don't know why I'm still doing this. I should stop when I know I should stop, but we're still going to keep going Did on. Did we get to see Tony go, or no, Tony, J Jimmy go pretty cool with his costume, or was with that Rhodes? just a tease? No, no, no. We, we, we get to see uh, see Rhodes in his full suit. Okay, they're, they're gearing up because there's stuff happening in uh, Japan. I'm not going to say anything other than that, but there's something happening there, and they're getting ready, and... This is really just all about Tony dealing with his insecurities as of right now. And as you know, with this, with the third story in this new arc, Tony's dealing with uh, coming to terms that, you know, he doesn't have his new memory. And right, he's, right. He's like pre Civil War memory. It was a nice, it was a nice issue. Memory. So, other than that, it was really character driven, and I really love that about this issue. I don't care what anyone has to say about naysaying about, you know, there's lack of action. There's some action, but other than that, strong. Tony's a charmer. He likes to go a little bit finesse before, you know. He beats the crap out of you. Solid issue, guys. This is a four out of five in my books. Pick it up. Good. And last but not least, we got Batman 700. This was an anniversary issue, giant size. Grant Morrison's back on Batman for a few issues, and that makes me very, very happy. Um, we get to see three stories. Well, three and a half, if you want to be technical. Uh, yeah. Um, each one focusing on Bruce Wayne as Batman, Dick Grayson as Batman, and Damien as Batman in different times. And. We talked about this a little bit, and the, the best way I could put this, because Krosha said this to me, and I think I should quote him on this one. This issue is nothing more than a celebration of Batman. A Who he is, what he stands for, the myth of Batman. He's always there. Batman is always there, and it was fun seeing that. You know, we get the first story is really Adam West esque, and Bruce didn't point this out to me. Uh, there's this one riddle that the Riddler says, and it just it's stuck in our heads. Um, who can, who can we beat but never defeat? And it just as we kept read, reading, reading, um, it, 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 it says volumes it about person. this. It, 
it doesn't just speak out for the issue itself. It speaks out as Bruce Wayne as a character. It speaks out for who as we are as a Batman character. Is. It stands out for Batman as an icon and what he does. It's something that can be beat, but not completely defeated. Yeah, you know? once he's that symbol that is there throughout time. And the second story was uh, ties into the Batman and Robin, you know, the dynamic with Dick and Damien, and that was fun. They're, they're paying respects, you know, that's another thing I like, that they were paying respects to Batman's origins as like a historical kind of thing, where he was born in Crime Alley, and they, they pay respect to that thing. And that was, that was, I liked that, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Third story was Damien, it was really, really crazy, really fun, really some zany ideas and some creepy guys kind in like it too. retro cyber, in a sense. Yeah, there, there was this little scene with a rat in a cyber, yeah, and that, that gave me some chills, but it was cool, it was cool, it was really awesome. It was real badass, uh, Damien, uh, I like him as a future Batman, I like that what if, and it seems like they're trying to get it more mm -hmm. incorporated. We got a little bit of Terry McGinnis in this too, it was pretty cool. I like you guys watched the Batman, Rob, Batman Beyond. I like how that no matter what, because this book was just, not just a celebration, but it's Batman as he progresses through time. So it's, I not love time, how, Not so much time travel. It was a time travel story, but Batman doesn't time travel. It's Batman surviving as an icon through the ages. So we get the past, the present, the tomorrow, which is like the semi And then the and, and tomorrow. Yeah. The, you know, the there's a conversion in time. I mean, that's... That was fun. That was great, in my opinion. Um, it's a little bit extra on the price tag, but it does give you some cool pinup art. Um... And a little data kind of thing, like you know, mm -hmm. most the most up to date Batcave. So that was fun. It's hefty. It's it's a five dollar price tag, and I wonder. Definitely worth it. Two thumbs up here. I'm gonna give it a solid five out of five, guys. Pick this up. And we got an extra treat for you this week. We got a, a trade we wanted to talk about. We got Wolverine Get Mystique. This came out a, about a year or so ago, I think. Written by Jason Aaron, drawn by uh, Ron Garney. This is probably my fa most favorite recent Wolverine story. It was balls of the walls action. He. It's a very simple story. He needs to get Mystique. He hates her right now, you know, because she did some double crossing against Mystique. And we get to see that the, some of their backstory, and they just go at it, and it's awesome. It's not necessarily just the going out of between. It's also Wolverine's travels to get to her, too. And it's just She a makes huge, him work for it. Yeah, it's this huge, gory, messy trail that Wolverine goes through, and yeah. it's really It was a real fun. treat. It's a fun read. Um, I recommend this to anyone who loves a good Wolverine story. So it's four out of five, guys. And that sums it up for this week. Um, thanks again for coming by. Uh, we'd love to hear what you guys think about us on our Facebook page or our YouTube. Um, until next time, take care, you guys. Laters.